Hey everyone, good afternoon. So today I'm making a bit of an exception and uh, we'll do a stream here on YouTube to check out uh, the Dragon Dawn, which is uh, the first DLC for Age of Wonders 4. And it's coming out on the 20th of June. But I can play it today. And it has a bunch of new content. There is now a third option for who you want your ruler to be, the Dragon Lord. There are also lizard people, although there's no actual new culture. And uh, there's a new tier 1 tome, a new tier 3 tome, and there's also a new realm you can play on. And I have some, also some new options for advanced or other custom realm creation. So yeah, we are going to check all of that out. Again, the main purpose here is to check out the new content. And uh, just to make it clear, I still stream primarily on Twitch, but that is not changing at all. I might just make an exception once in a while and uh, do an occasional stream here on YouTube for when it makes sense, like today. But yeah, my main streaming activity is still over on Twitch. If you're interested in that, you should definitely follow me there. So anyway, here's the new realm in the Dragon Dawn, a Dragonfire Cradle. A realm still in flux, dominated by the dragons that his creation spawned, attending to his growth. A schism has formed between the dragons, bringing about a conflict now known as the Ashen War. Right here. The elder dragons that guide this realm have descended into a brutal conflict now known as Ashen War. Each side is seeking guide to the realm's growth as they believe is best. The Dawn Warders start in the alliance and at war with each of the reshapers. The reshapers start in alliance and at war with each of the Dawn Wanderers. The Dawn Wardens. Each of the elder dragons is extremely powerful and has a powerful unique ability owing to their affinity. They extend lesser versions of these abilities to their chosen heroes. Whoever forms an alliance with all Elder Dragons or forms an alliance with all members of either alliance and defeats each member of the opposing alliance is victorious. So yeah, there we go. That's the new option here. And I assume you can just make a custom realm and pick that as one of the advanced settings in the presence trait. Yeah, it's right here. Are there any other new traits in here? Let's check real quick. I don't think so. Yeah, the new content has an icon over here. That's how it's easy to identify. Nope, looks like that's just it. The Ashen War. Choose your destination. All right. Yeah, let's do... Okay, we can do hard, that's fine, I think. Yeah, so this is the number of players other than, you know, the actual dragon factions. There are quite a few of them, so not that much space left for regular players. This is probably going to be a pretty big map. Most likely. Your journey. Alright, so let's make a custom faction here. You can select one of the pre-maids, obviously. But we'll make a custom one. So I don't think there are any actual new traits, as far as I'm aware. We could go for like more of a meme build, in a sense, and pick spider mounts. Because if you just spam cavalry units, this ability is actually pretty good. Not because of the immobilized part, but mostly because it does AoE damage. So hey, we could do that. And for the mind trade, I have a few favorites in here. I really like Elusive for this extra plus six defense and resistance against retaliation and opportunity attacks. That's a very, very good one. A straight up plus one defense and resistance when standing next to another friendly unit is good though. Overwhelm tactics are also very good. 
<coughs> for plus 20% credit chance when standing next to a friendly unit with overwhelm tactics. I mean, Tenacious is also good. A lot of things in here are pretty damn good. Alright, let's go with Elosif. Okay, Elosif it is then. Oh yeah, we'll be a lizard people. Right, Elosif. And let's grab spider mounts, why not? Uh, hey, Milamber. Oh, did they not update the tooltip? Yeah, the tooltip still says 20%. With that said, this is obviously like the Dragon Dawn build. Some things here might be different than on live. I haven't really checked or compared. But you know, obviously we're not playing the build that's currently on production. Because the DLC will not be released until June the 20th. And today we got to June the 8th. Right, well, either way. Here are the lizard people. We'll grab a Lozif and the spider mounts. That's fine. Origin culture. And uh, let's go with barbarian. <laughs> yeah, lizard and a spider. That actually looks kind of funny. All right, let's do barbarians, and we'll use a combo I really like, which is oh yeah, artifact borders. Gain a tier 2 for a hero item after clearing an ancient wonder or infestation. Gain extra mana with hero items through artifact or Alright, okay, we should actually do that instead. It's going no need. Is my voice lizard like? I would hope not. Is it off? How about now? Is it fine now? Uh, I mean, I would have to check what exactly you're talking about. Okay, I really don't like troubleshooting things live. What exactly? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I just checked. I did sound like a lizard for about a minute. But it's fine now, right? Yeah, yeah, but I checked. I'm not sure what caused that. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. I turned it off because I was checking uh, the footage to see what exactly was wrong. I didn't want to give you the feedback effect. <laughs> Where you can hear me 20 times. All at the same time, you know? But yeah, anyway, I don't know what caused that. Right, anyway, Artifact Hoarders. We should actually grab Artifact Hoarders. So gain a tier 2 free hero item after clearing an Ancient Wonder or an Infestation. That definitely sounds pretty good. So we'll grab that. I had a slightly different plan, but plans can change. Doesn't look like there's anything else that's new. So I might just go with uh, Adept Settlers here to speed things up a little bit. And I don't like having that plus one city cap and the plus one population in newly founded cities. This can give you quite a bit of extra momentum early on. And that plus one city cap is actually worth quite a lot because it delays the increases in Imperium cost. 
so it's actually one of my favorite societal traits to be honest my other favorite though is actually runesmiths runesmiths are insanely good because this minus 30 percent reduction to unit enchantment upkeep is more like minus 50 percent because anything that costs you two mana per unit per turn is reduced and rounded down to one mana and there are a lot of enchantments that cost you two mana per unit so it's effectively a 50 percent reduction and over the course of the entire game it works out to roughly a minus 50 percent discount so i really like this and there are a lot of really powerful enchantments i'm sure i don't have to tell you that and if i do yeah there are a lot of really powerful enchantments and you can research them for 30 percent less knowledge and you get plus one rank to shield and polar units so yeah we'll actually go with runesmiths here runesmiths and artifact hoarders it will be a bit of a weird combo here and i mean i could go with industrials but I don't want to play Industrials every single time. I played a lot of Industrials, all right? Because it's so friggin' good. But let's not the Industrials every single time ever. Okay, so there are two new tomes in the Dragon Dawn. Tom of Evolution is the first one in Tier 1. And there's a new tome in Tier 3 as well. So obviously we'll pick Tom of Evolution because it's the new content. Let's see what we got in here. Shepherd. Novice hero skill. While army leader, all units with evolve in the army have minus 20% upkeep, plus two defense, plus one resistance. That sounds pretty good. Okay, that does sound pretty good. Youthful rejuvenation. Healing buff spell. Target unit heals for 18 hit points and gains strengthened. Effect is doubled if the unit has evolved. This is very nice. Slither Hatchling. A skirmisher unit that evolves into a stronger unit. It's a tier 1 skirmisher animal. With venomous speed. Melee. So physical and uh, blight damage here. With draconic rage. When this unit's total hit points reach 60% or lower, it deals plus 30% damage. But you know what? I actually did sound a bit like a lizard uh, back there when the audio glitched out. <laughs> I should have kept it that way for immersion. I totally should have kept it that way. Actually sound like a lizard. I actually evolved into a lizard IRL just to play this. I'm just that committed, you know? Anyway, next up, Rapid Evolution Enchantment. So that's a unit enchantment. Plus 20% experience from combat. Resurgence if they are a tier 1 or tier 2, making them come back to life if they die in combat. Really? Oh, affects units that evolve. Okay. I mean, that's not bad depending on how easily it will be to have a lot of units that evolve. But getting Resurgence on every tier 1 and tier 2 unit, that's potentially really nice, especially this early on. Oh yeah, it definitely has some synergies with the red and green. Why do you think we're red and green? Summon Wyvern Fledgling. So that's another unit with the Draconic Rage, alright. A fighter unit. Got it. And it evolves into wyverns. Evolves into a fire, frost, gold, or obsidian wyvern. Interesting. Alright, alright. Let's check this hatchling real quick. Evolves into a slither. A tier 3 skirmisher. With a draconic rage and sleep away. When this unit's hit points are reduced to zero, it is displaced by three hexes and heals for plus 15 temporary hit points. Works once per battle. That is pretty nice. That is actually really nice. 
Okay, I like this a lot. There are some potentially interesting combos with this. I like this a lot. Okay, and finally we got the Draconic Vitality, which is a minor race transformation. Target race is imbued with Dragon-like Vitality, granting them plus 3 hit points per unit rank. Yeah, that's not bad. Plus 3 hit points per unit rank, that's actually pretty good. Alright, well, Tome of Evolution it is then. And uh, here's the new option, the Dragon Lord. Now we can be a champion, a Wizard King or a Dragon Lord. So as a Dragon Lord, you gain extra gold with the Dragon Horde. Hero items in the, the Dragon's arsenal grant additional gold income. You know, you know what this is, right guys? You guys know what this is. This has been made for me specifically. Like this was literally made just for me. Because I tend to just hoard everything. And there's no limit to your hero item inventory in this game. So this is literally a trade made specifically for me. <laughs> it's personalized. I'm actually a dragon. Dragon Lords have a 30 gold unit upkeep and cannot equip most hero items. Yeah, all hail inventory hoarding. I know, right? And the Dragon Lords have access to powerful hero skills and the transformations. So obviously that's what we're going to be. Alright, here's our dragon. Let's see how much we can customize this. I start thinking about a good name, by the way. Oh, and we have uh, all kinds of dragons here. Astral Dragon. Gain additional Astral Affinity Point. Breath and close the Lightning Damage. Chaos Dragon. So, Fire Damage, Extra Affinity. Physical Damage. Blight Damage. Okay, so it's just that Affinity Point and the different kinds of damage. Right? I think we should pick something other than physical. So either chaos or nature. I think nature would kind of make sense. That way we'll have three affinity points in chaos, three in nature and two in materium. I should be able to get some important imperium skills pretty quickly with that. Uh, yes, they do have slightly different appearances. Here's Chaos Dragon. Actually, you can just change your appearance yourself. So uh, this has no impact on appearance. What has impact on appearance is how you change it yourself. So it can be a nature dragon, and you can change it a fair bit in here. Alright. Yeah, nature dragons are black, didn't you know? Yes, indeed. Okay. Ornamentation. Ooh, okay. Nice. Nice, nice. I like that one. Okay, here are all the options. I like this one. Wing length, obviously biggest possible, right? Uh, that's not really changing much, as far as I can tell. Is it actually changing when I change this slider? Not much. Actually not much, if any. Oh wait, no, this is neck. Yeah, wing length... I don't know if it's broken or... It doesn't actually change anything, does it? Let's just set it to maximum. In case it will actually change something once we're in game. Okay, neck length. Obviously the longest possible. Body length. Okay. <laughs> uh, that looks a little bit weird. <laughs> okay, alright. 
that's some pretty big wings compared to the rest of it. You can make some pretty funny looking dragons with this. Okay, obviously longest possible. Tail length, but obviously longest possible. If you say slider, you should set it to max. That's just how dragons work. It's not a dragon if it doesn't have everything set to maximum, you know? Yep, maximum. Dragon pose. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. Uh, that looks just a little bit disturbing. No, this looks all wrong. This definitely looks wrong. I can't quite put my finger on it, but this looks very wrong. Extremely wrong. Yeah, would actually make more sense with shorter legs that way. Yeah, turkey dragon. <laughs> Yeah, that looks slightly wrong. Let's just make legs a bit shorter here. I think this is perfectly fine. Alright. What are you doing with your leg here? Alright. What else do we have here? Head. Alright. That's an interesting looking face. What is that supposed to be? Alright, let's actually leave it at that. Horns. Okay, a lot of different kinds of horns here. I like this one. Is that even horns? Because that's a lot of horns. Start thinking about the name, chat. I rely on you here. Okay, I kind of like that one. Because I'm terrible at names for pretty much anything ever. Alright, I like this one. Head length. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, alright. Uh, that looks a little bit weird. But this also looks kind of weird, doesn't it? It really does. Okay, sure. Slider to maximum. I mean, we could just set all sliders to maximum. But I'm keeping legs shorter. That looked really disturbing with very long legs. Head size. Obviously biggest. I mean, obviously. Huge as head and tiny body. That would be a little bit weird. Okay, let me just check what that would look like. <laughs> okay, no, that just looks really wrong. Where's that pause we had earlier? Yeah, this just looks a little bit wrong. What is wrong with your face? Like, what is actually wrong with your face here? Yeah, cow dragon. Alright, maybe slightly smaller head. This is fine. And uh, last we have eye color. Red looks fine to me. Alright, this is our slightly disturbing looking dragon. Why not? I think that works. We need a dragon icon though. How do you have an expansion called Dragon Dawn and you don't have a dragon symbol over here? I guess this one. This is kind of a dragon, I suppose. Pretty sure this is not new, though. We can have a penguin. We can have a chicken. Chicken is basically a dragon, right? A very distant cousin. There's no chicken here, though. But I would totally have a chicken if there was one. Okay, this is fine. Race. So, blizzard people. Arm length, leg length, the usual. Army skin color. I mean, green is fine. Head. There. Okay, that's good. 
your journey. All right. Begins. Now we need a good name for our dragon. Marbchomp. You actually also cannot have a last name. Although I think you can, but by default you don't. Okay, you can, but by default you only have a first name. And we'll need a race name as well. Marbzilla. Okay, that's not bad. That could work. Whoops, didn't lock that one. What the heck? Oh, it locked itself by default. Fair enough. Yeah, something with the hoarder. That would also work. That could also work. And we need a race name. A dragon only mother could love. Hey, don't diss him. He's a beautiful dragon. Don't apply unrealistic standards. Okay, we need a good uh, lizard name. I mean, a race name. These are pretty terrible, to be honest. Raging skinks, really? I mean, not so much. Uh, something with hoarders. Okay, something with hoarders would actually make sense. Snake scammers. Yeah, true, that could work though. Okay, I mean, why not? We can be Marbzilla the Hoarder of the Snake Scammers. Sons of Smaug. Yeah, that's also not bad. I kind of like that one. Okay, I like that one. Alright, there we go. Let's see how this is gonna go. I mostly want to see how the economy is going to work out, especially early in the game, and how many extra items we'll get. Because we do get extra gold for having uh, items, and we also get more hero items, for clearing wonders and infestations. So we should definitely focus on that more. All right, here we are. So we have Song of the Reckless. For three turns, target friendly unit gains Berserk and three stacks of Strengthened, right? And Youthful Regeneration. So heals for 18 and gains Strengthened. Effect is doubled if the unit has evolved. All right, here's our dragon. It's a pretty big one. Yep, how big is this map? Let's zoom out all the way. It's pretty big. It's definitely pretty big. Yep, yep. All right, all right. So, workshop first. We'll get a farm when we get there. What units did we start with? Let's check our main guy here. So here's our dragon. Indeed, he's a dragon. Dragon Claw. So he can still use some items. Right? Armor is disabled, which makes sense. He can use weapons and he can use miscellaneous items. So he can use rings. Uh, he uses, right, he uses his own weapon, obviously, but he can use rings and miscellaneous items. All right, so 18 damage with melee strike right at the start, okay. Charge resistance, lesser dragon breath, deal damage in a two hex cone, chance of inflicting poisoned, all right. Demolisher.
right, we started with a locket of channeling, which is pretty nice. Plus 10 combat casting points at the start of the battle. Siege Breaker. Also makes sense. And the Draconic Rage. So when this unit's total hit points reach 60% or lower, it deals plus 30% damage. Obviously ruler, large target, hero, flying, and the dragon. Obviously dragon. Looks pretty dragony to me. All right, here's our scout, and we have underground passage right away too. Interesting. We can check it out. That looks like an infestation potentially. We don't want to clear as many infestations as possible, as quickly as possible, because we get extra items out of that. So okay, we started with a flow serpent, which is pretty nice and the two astral wisps, which are maybe not that nice. Actually, no, wait, this is the stack, right, fair enough. Uh, two warriors on spiders. So you know what the plan is, right, with these spiders. Seems pretty obvious what the plan is. Let's see how well that's gonna work out. Now, the flow serpent can be a little bit annoying, because you hit it once, Okay, I will accept outcomes where we don't lose anything, just to make this whole thing a little bit faster. But yeah, the plan is to spam web. Oh yeah, there we go, we got the Lightbringer, that's nice. That's a very nice unit to get on turn one, because now we'll have Convert. That's a great unit to get on turn one. Actually amazing. Okay, that's a pretty good turn one, I would say. Slither Hatchling, Draconic Vitality. Right, let's grab the units. So Slither Hatchling, that's fine. And uh, that's turn one. Yeah, it's slightly lower damage. It's not as ridiculous as it was, but it's still pretty damn strong. The Ashen War, yep. Oh, and we have to already pick a side. I mean, okay, we don't have to. I can get an immediate boost in relations with some of them. I would be doing this blindly because I don't know where exactly they are. But if I don't take the boost, I might end up with both of the sides hating me pretty quickly. So really, I guess we could just agree with one of them. Okay. Well, there we go. They are all over the place. Good to know. Let's keep going. We'll clear as much as possible. There's an infestation. Okay, so we will get the hero items every time we clear an infestation. That's basically the plan here. See how many we can clear. Maybe some wonders as well, for the same reason. 67 production, nice. That will already be finished in two turns. I could finish it right now. Let's do that. There. Done. Okay, next up, Vendor, one turn. Okay. Inferno Puppy, Gremlin. Yeah, we need to get this uh, monster then down here, but let's get this one first. Uh, kill some stuff on the way. Uh, two Lightbringers. A little bit risky fighting them, but I mean, it should be fine. Okay, it's fine. Again, I'm keeping any outcome where we don't lose anything, just to make this go a little bit faster. I want to do as much as possible right now, today. Preferably in about two hours or less. 
That's the plan, about two hours. We'll see how much we can do in two hours. All right, more population on the next turn. Now we can grab the storehouse. Is there a forester nearby? Yes and no, right here. Okay, that's good enough. And we leveled up already. So let's see what we can get here for our Dragon Lord. Health, plus two defense, plus five blight resistance. Plus two vision range, plus two sensing range. Tail swipe. Okay, that looks pretty strong. 35 damage. Attacks three adjacent units and removes their defense mode and retaliation mode. Okay, alright. Ancient Governor 1. When the Governor grant the city plus 10 knowledge, plus 15 stability, plus 15 fortification health. Okay, that's pretty nice, because if some AI is threatening to siege your city, you can just move your dragon to that city and get instant boost to fortification, plus 15. That is kind of nice. Dragon breath, comet. Okay, comet, cone and line. Did they just add a comet to another game? They just did that, didn't they? They literally just did that. In before, there's an event with a comet involved. It's somewhere in Dragon Dawn. That would not surprise me. So, ranged breath that deals damage to all units in one hex radius. Right? In a free hex cone. And in a five hex long line. Yeah, I think I prefer comet here. For a one hex radius AoE. That's the most flexible one. That is by far the most flexible one. Exhilarating Roar. Friendly units in a two hex radius gain strengthened and hastened. Okay, yep, yeah, that's nice. And this is Adept. Expert. Cooldown of the breath attack is reduced by one. What's the cooldown? Two turn cooldown. So we can make it one turn cooldown. Interesting. Terrifying Gorging. Has a base 90% chance of consuming the target tier 1, 2 or 3 enemy unit. If successful, heals the unit for plus 30. If resisted, deals 30 physical damage instead. When this unit is killed, the last unit that was consumed is brought back. This is the same exact skill uh, that one neutral unit has. The mythical one. What is it called? It's the same exact skill. What the heck is that guy called? You know the one I'm talking about, right? You can sort by tier here. What was he called? But it's the same exact skill, except now you can get it yourself. And no, not the Chaos Eater. It's a neutral unit. It's a neutral tier 5 unit that you can sometimes get in uh, infestations. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Why is it not listed here? Yeah, this guy. Yeah, this guy. Or does he... Yeah, this is the same exact thing. Yep, so this is the same exact thing, except now you can get it yourself. That is pretty nice, actually. Yeah, that is pretty nice. So now you can just eat your enemies. There you go. This is expert level. And it's still a 90% base chance. It's literally the same exact ability. Nature Aura. At the end of each turn, this unit and adjacent friendly units gain regeneration. Okay, you know what I want to do now? Now I want to check every single dragon type and see what they have. Because this is a nature dragon. So they have poison damage attached to their breath. And at master level, they can give friendly units regeneration. 
himself and every single adjacent unit at the end of each turn. This sound, yeah, this sounds kind of amazing. Yeah, for a dead star group. Yeah, but that's a good name for it. But yeah, now I kind of want to check other dragon types. Maybe we'll do that real quick. Okay, I don't think there's anything new under warfare and battle magic. Or support. Yeah, it's the same thing. So it's just, uh, yeah, obviously Dragon Lord category. All right, well, let's grab this tail swipe thing. That's a lot of damage. Nice. That is a lot of damage. I'm really liking this. I like the idea yeah, of your dollar being like this one huge badass unit. I definitely like that a lot. With the unique abilities and things like that. Okay, let's see what uh, items we get out of this. They are mostly going to be irrelevant. So any items that are relevant for us are miscellaneous items and rings. Anything else is basically gold per turn for us, for the horde. Wand of provocation, okay. Spider leg. Is that new? There was a miscellaneous item that summoned the trinkets, but it was... Uh, that summoned the spiders, but it was tier 1 spiders. I don't think I ever actually found this. It's either new or I never found this in like 180 hours. I don't remember having this. Yeah, a random tier 2 spider, not tier 1, tier 2. Okay, obviously I'll take that. <laughs> Marbzilla the Hoarder. I really like that name. They're spider leg. Well, there you go. We already have three miscellaneous items there. Man, I'm really liking this so far. Okay, so now I need a forester. I mean, I don't need a forester, but I want a forester. I can't have two, however. That's obviously not happening. Two farms for a stonemason. Yeah, that makes sense. This is not like the best terrain of all time. Wait, really? Oh, right, infestation. It's fine, we are kind of on our way to get that. Not a problem. I should queue up some units. I got distracted with all the shiny dragon things. And I did not actually queue up any units in our city. Which is kind of bad. Oh yeah, let's get the slither hatchlings. Yep, so they evolve into a slither. Which was a unit with sleep away. So when this unit's hit points are reduced to zero, it is displaced by three hexes and heals for plus 15 temporary hit points. Works once per battle. I quite like that. Yeah, there we go. That's our research finishing just now. And there's the actual summon. So Wyvern Fledgling, which then evolves into Wyverns. Fire, Frost, Gold, Obsidian. All right. Obviously, we'll research that. So let's grab this and then we're going back. Yep. Here's another infestation. Nice. With a bone dragon and such. So hold on. Let me save this really quick. Because since the main purpose of this stream is to check out as many new things as possible. What I want to do right now is check out the other dragons real quick. Doesn't really matter what we play on, just to make it quick. So I want to check out the other dragons. Your journey starts here. How many types were there exactly? Whoops, okay, that's not quite what I wanted to do. I wanted to edit. There were like five types or six types. 
I want to check the master level ability on each one of them. Because the bread type is kind of predictable. It's going to be the same as their general damage type. But the master tier ability is not that obvious. Let's try this again. Okay. Choose your destination. Your journey. And let's just pick one of the premates here. I assume they have a premade for each type. Does it even say here? Edit. What is your people? Dragon Lord. Uh, appearance. I assume this is chaos. Okay, there's chaos, astral, right, for each affinity type. So we were nature. I want to check the other five, basically. So let's check chaos really quick. Begins. Because again, the purpose of this stream is mostly to check out all the new stuff. There's a hero ring that grants sleep away. Oh, that's nice. You would have to find it, though. Alright, anyway. Chaos Dragon. Wait, did I start underground here? Yeah, I did. Alright. Doesn't matter. This is just to check uh, the dragon. This one looks pretty good. I like this one. Uh, anyway. So I assume the breath is just going to be fire. Yeah, inflicts burning, obviously. That's predictable. Chaos Aura. At the end of each turn, adjacent enemy units have a base 60% chance of being inflicted with a random negative status effect. Okay. So you want as many enemies next to you as possible. Alright, alright. They will all have terrifying gorging. So that's Chaos, Dragon. Every enemy next to you has 60% chance of being inflicted with a random negative status effect. That's chaos. Nature was a give regeneration to every adjacent friendly unit and yourself. Your destination. Okay, let's check the next one. Your journey starts here. What is your so this is astral, I assume. Reveal yourself. Okay, Astral Dragon. Your journey begins. There might also be, yes, yeah, some more special abilities. But we'll have to get to uh, level 4 for that, I guess. There might be something new there. I assume there's going to be something new because that just makes sense. I will be disappointed if there's nothing new. Alright, anyway, Astral Dragon. Yeah, yeah, you were right. Every four levels. So hopefully we'll get to level four and we'll check out if there's anything new there. So Astral Aura. At the end of each turn, this unit and adjacent friendly units gain two bolstered resistance. At the end of each turn, adjacent enemy units gain two thunder resistance. Oh, this is actually pretty nice. You get both a positive effect to add the chase and allies, and a negative effect to add the chase and enemies. And the thunder resistance in particular is really good, because not only it lowers resistance, it also lowers status resistance. And status resistance is super important, as you probably know. Literally any status effect in the game is checked against status resistance. Including things like mind control. So, that's actually a pretty nice one. Okay, so that was Astral. Let's check the next one. So, Materium and such. Your journey starts here. Crocodile Corsairs. Alright. What is your people's form? Oh, wait, this is not a Dragon Lord. Whoops. What is your ruler's all right, all right. What defines their society? What is your people's form? Okay, let's check Materium. Your journey begins. 
Though dragon leaders get that irritating tail slap attack, other dragons get... Yes. Yes, you can pick up a tail attack. I just did before we started checking other dragon types. You can pick it up very early too. And it's pretty high damage. Here, let me show you. Right here, tail swipe. It's a novice hero skill. And it's 35 damage. So, pretty nice. Okay, so this is Materium Dragon. At the end of each turn... Right, so this is uh, the same as previous one, but bolstered defense and sundered defense. Okay, so this is also a uh, minus one status resistance. There are definitely a few small changes, which I like. So now both sundered resistance and sundered defense also reduces status resistance. But yeah, so this is Materium. Previous one was Astral. We have two more left. Not sure which one I like the most Choose so far. Your destination. Uh, that's a tough one. Choose your that's actually a tough one. Your journey starts here. Reveal yourself. Okay, so we have Order and Shadow. Let's check order next. Begins. Nerf Dragon Lords. Yeah. They are definitely pretty strong. But remember, they cannot use any armor items. Or weapons. They have their own weapon. So they can only really use rings and miscellaneous items. That's it. Okay, so this is Order Dragon. Order Aura. At the end of each turn, this unit and adjacent friendly units gain Rally, Fortune, and Bolstered Resistance. Oh, wow. Okay. I kind of like this one, though. Not a random one from this list. You gain all three. Rally, Fortune, and Bolstered Resistance. That is pretty nice for a, a dead star group. That is definitely nice. Okay, so last but not least, we still have the Dark Dragon. Let's check that real quick. Choose your destination. Your journey starts here. So Dark Dragon. Shadow Dragon, whatever. Your journey begins. All right, Shadow Dragon. Let's see. What do you have? Shadow Aura. At the end of each turn, at the chase and enemy units gain misfortune. Okay. Yeah, that's also not bad. I think out of all of these, I liked Order and Nature the most. Yeah, Order and Nature, I think. That's my favorites, based on the first impression here. Why does Paradox hate Shadow? I don't know, you'll have to ask them. Alright, uh, let's load. I guess I should delete this, eh? <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, probably. Let's delete this real quick, so that they won't clutter this whole list. All right, back to Marbzilla.
but yeah, I agree. Shadow is a bit underwhelming. Shadow is my least played one so far. It's kind of hard to find the good synergies for Shadow Tomes. That's my main issue with it. I definitely struggle to find the good synergies for Shadow Tomes. Obviously there are some, but not nearly as good as for many other Tomes. Uh, Alright, Skeletons. No problem. Mace of Smiting, alright. So can we see how much we're gaining from the Belete? Yeah, Dragon Horde tier 2. Plus 9 gold right now. Uh, where else can we see that? I don't think we can see it in here. I wanted to see the exact numbers. But it was more gold for higher tier items, obviously. Anyway, level 3. We need one more level to unlock signature skill. I wanted to see if there's anything new in there. I assume there is, because why wouldn't there be? Anyway, we can grab plus 10 knowledge right away, so I think we should do that. We are still very early. We are only getting 60 knowledge per turn, so plus 10 knowledge per turn and plus 15 stability is definitely nice to have. That will speed up our research quite a bit. So that's the plan. Okay, and you know, I think the Dragon Lure will synergize pretty well with the Barbarians. Because Barbarian Scouts can start outposts, but they are twice as expensive. 100 gold instead of 50, and that gold can definitely add up. At the same time, if you play Dragon Laurel, you're going to have more gold on average. And you can combine it with Materium or something, but you don't have to. But yeah, I think that's a great synergy, Barbarians and the Dragon Laurels. And just leverage the extra gold you'll get early on. Okay, for population now. We don't really need a gold mine all that much early on as Dragon Lurels. But we should definitely grab the Iron Deposit, obviously. Okay, Quarry is fine. Battle Ritual side, that's only one turn. Uh, okay. Well, I don't want Call of Chaos ASAP, that will be available in three turns. We can wait. We are on our way to get rid of this monster then, so we can pick that up by the time we get here. That should take around three turns anyway. And I'll probably want to unlock uh, road building as soon as possible. You know, when I first started playing Age of Wonders 4, I really underestimated just how strong road building is. Because this free gold per hex is not that big of a deal, and building a road speeds up your movement while you're building a road. So in a sense, you can use that ability as, like, faster movement on the map. Like, literally. You can essentially just pay 3 gold per hex to move faster on that turn. With the exception of terrain you cannot build roads on. Like, you know, mountains. But you can just use it that way. Okay, 45 knowledge, nice. Alright, we're getting Slither Hatchling in just a moment, that's good. Hopefully we can get enough experience to evolve it. Might have been good to pick up plus 30% experience to get our units to evolve a little bit faster. But it's alright. There it is. You can join the stack. Okay, and we need one more turn to pick up Call of Chaos, I think. Yep. Good timing. There's the summon. Okay, yeah, Vision of Victory is fine, we can grab that. We can summon a Wyvern, that's fine.
Yeah, the other thing you can get uh, with your early gold armor heroes, that's a good strategy. You can just treat the extra heroes as like a 30 gold per unit, unit basically. Because the penalty is not really that bad. As long as you have the gold, just pay the penalty. It's 30 gold per hero. And really, it's worth it. Early on, it's definitely worth it. Right, web because of the spider mount. Sundering caster. All right. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Magic attacks inflict sundered defense. Wait, not a chance. Always inflict sundered defense. Okay, that's kind of ridiculously good. I'm just going to grab this guy right away. <laughs> yep. Yep, I'm just grabbing that guy. Alright, Call of Chaos. There you go. Do we have anything we can give him? Uh, nope. Alright, that's fine. Let's get rid of that monster then, really quick. Not much of a monster then. Okay, what did we get? A true shot. A tier 4 bow. From a shitty monster then. That was right next to our capital. A Bone Wyvern mount? Okay. Man, that's really nice. But only the third hero for this. It'll be worth hiring a third hero right away for this. That's a very, very nice bow. That's a great bow. Insanely good, even. Like, I'm surprised they got a tier 4 bow from something I literally could have cleared on turn 1. That's kind of nuts. Now, see, I can't respec because... I mean, I can respec, but this guy had an inherent trait that he will always have, uh, which sunders the targets with magic attacks. This is not a chance. This will always sunder, sunder the targets with magic attacks. This is insanely strong. It's okay, we'll have more heroes. Our next hero can be an archer. Our next hero will be an archer, based on this. Okay. Well, I mean, this is going quite well so far. Dragons are balanced, guys. Totally balanced. Nothing overpowered to see here. Move along. Alright. What else do we have in here? Okay, second forester. Let's grab that real quick. Town Hall. Alright. Here. And then we can start spamming Furies. You know, because spider mounts. But let's get one more Slither Hatchling. Right, for the next Empire development, probably Fruitful Integration here. And we want to start a city somewhere, probably over here. Now, I can use my scout for that, but if I plan to go in that general direction with my hero, it will be cheaper to do it with the hero. I'm just saying. Let's go north. See what's up. Okay, another infestation. We want to clear as many of those as possible. And the wyvern fledgling. I'm going to have two stacks pretty soon. Yep. I'm pretty much about to have two stacks, more or less. Yes, I am currently at... yeah, here you go. This is plus 9 gold per turn from a single tier 4 item, as long as it's sitting in my inventory. I will no longer get that gold once I equip it. But right now I'm getting 9 gold per turn just from that one item. That is really, really strong. If you can hoard enough items, and remember, one other thing you can do, remember, you can get items not just by finding them. You can literally buy items from other AIs. You know? And just keep them in your hoard. So when you buy, and sometimes the AI sells items really, really cheap. So I feel like this might be slightly broken with how 
willing the AI often is to sell you items cheap. This might actually be pretty broken. You just buy everything you possibly can, make it sit in your hoard, and get a shit ton of gold per turn for it. Like, that's literally what you can potentially do. Just treat the items you buy as buying gold per turn for flat gold. Just treat it as paying gold to get gold per turn for the rest of the game. To get a perpetual, unbreakable deal for gold per turn. That's literally what you're doing when you're buying items from the AI. That is literally what you're doing. You're getting a perpetual, completely unbreakable deal to get gold per turn for the rest of the game. And you can pay like, I don't know, 50 gold, for example. They are often like quite willing to sell you items very, very cheap. Okay, was there one there nearby? Well, there's this one. That's bronze, we can probably clear that. Because we get extra items for clearing wonders and infestations. So, yeah. We can try to clear it. Let's clear this stack over here. Okay, that's quite a lot of dudes. We can clear all that, that's fine. Uh, okay, let's do one manually. Check out our dragon. He's a pretty big boy. Wait, does he take two tiles? Uh, no, he doesn't. Okay, I thought for a moment he takes two tiles. It probably would have made sense if your dragon occupied the two tiles, you know? I think that would probably make sense if that was the case. Uh, anyway, we got three flow serpents. This might be a slightly annoying fight. And I got a bunch of wounded units, so let's keep them in the back. No need to lose anything if we don't have to, that's fine. Move everyone over here. Right, Wyvern fledglings can fly, obviously. These guys will teleport, but that's okay. Maybe we can convert one of them with our Lightbringer. We shall see. Yeah, not the entwined for all. Hey, early on, every single unit can count. If you don't have to lose a unit at the start of the game, you shouldn't. This is especially important if you play on Brutal. If you lose a unit, even a tier 1 unit, super early into the game, that's actually important. It can make a difference. Nice, mind controlled. Okay, let's slab the rest. So we can use the Dragon Breath. Not from this far away. Oh yeah, Spider Flood. There you go. That summons a tier 2 spider and it can move right away. Very nice. Yeah, that's a pretty strong item right there. Now they will go into the invulnerability. Unfortunately. Because that's just what flow serpents do. Not much I can do about that. Can I hit the other one? Who can hit it? Eh, well, sort of. I don't want to move through this fire if I don't have to. Okay, I guess there's no huge rush. Okay, there's the teleport. They're attacking... Uh, the spider has summoned. Yep. Now we can slap it with the dragon. Man, this guy does quite a lot of damage. So tail swipe is 35 and it's a frontal cone attack. But even our regular attack does a lot very early on. It's a very strong unit. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. The flow serpent has to be one of the more annoying units to deal with. It's not hard to kill or anything like that. It's just very irritating. That's what it is. It's extremely irritating to deal with. And now I have to wait again. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Might as well stand next to my dragon to get rejuvenation. 
All right. Did you get it? Or did you not get it? Oh, it's at the end of the dragon's turn, is it? Let me double check the wording on that. Oh, wait, we don't have it, obviously. It's a master skill. <laughs> How can we possibly have it? Obviously, we don't have it. All right, well, one more. Still need to wait here. Again, that was a summon the onion, so it doesn't matter. And done. All right. Yeah, they die if I sneeze too hard. Stuff of decay. Well, there you go. We are already getting 26 gold per turn from the Dragon Horde. Yeah, here's the breakdown. 1 gold for tier 1 items, 3 gold for tier 2 items, 5 gold for tier 3 items, and 9 gold for tier 4 items. So we are already getting 26 extra gold per turn on turn 10. Did I play Diablo 4? Is it good? Oh yeah, I played it quite a bit. And I've been enjoying it quite a bit. If you ask me, it's definitely better than I expected it to be. A someone who just doesn't have the time to sink into Path of Exile anymore. Don't get me wrong, Path of Exile is a great game. But it's not only for me anymore, I just don't have the time. I used to. Alright, Division of Victory. So now we can get the Rapid Evolution Enchantment. A Draconic Vitality Transformation. So that's plus 3 hit points per unit rank. That's definitely nice. This gives a resurgence to every tier 1 or 2 unit. And that can evolve. This is not just units that are new with the Dragon Dawn. This is any unit in the game that can evolve. Yeah, this grants a resurgence to every unit in the game that can evolve. I feel like there will be some pretty good combos with this. I can see some pretty good strategies with this. You know what I would like to see in the future, in Age of Wonders 4, in like future DLCs? I would like to see this evolution concept expanded on. And I mean expanded on a lot more than it's currently. Because it's a very interesting mechanic and I like it a lot. But it could be like a lot more interesting and a lot more complex. You could have more than one tier of evolutions. You could have like multiple evolution paths. There's a lot you could do with the unit evolution system. So I really hope they will expand it in the future. Oh yeah, I had some concerns as well, but I don't anymore. I think they really nailed the balance between like hardcore and casual. And also this is just anecdotal evidence, but I talked with at least four people who have never played not only a Diablo game before, but they never played an action RPG game before, but they're playing this one. And they're enjoying it. Alright, next up, uh, let's grab the Wizard Tower Foundation to get some more Imperium going. And we are at 6 population already. If I'm going to attack the Ruin, I guess we should start expanding in its general direction. But it is 4 provinces away, meaning it will take a little bit of time to get there. We can grab the Iron Deposit. Okay, let's grab the Iron Deposit. Build things faster. Right, I could actually grab an outpost over here or so. That is not a bad idea. It's a bit close to that brigand camp, but I'm coming to clear it anyway. Not immediately, but I am kind of coming. This is pretty close to one of the dragons. Indifferent currently. Okay. We could try to stay friendly with them. Did they claim this land or did they not? 
All right, I currently don't have enough. They do have a distant claim on it. So that's not great. I don't want to piss them off too early. Yeah, let's not piss them off just yet. Although early war might not be a terrible idea. Just remember, these guys don't start from zero. They will have like an existing army and shit. Okay, hi, experience looks pretty good. We got to level four. Now we can check out signature skills. See if there's anything new. Hopefully there's something new. Oh, okay. We have things that are unique for us. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. So astral aspect. This unit gains attunement fortune, increasing critical hits, blah blah blah. With each spell cast and plus two resistance. Increases unit upkeep by seven mana. This unit deals plus 10% damage per negative status effect on the target, stacks up to three times, and also gains plus 50% morale from all sources. This unit gains plus 30% critical hit chance and plus two defense. This unit gains plus 20 hit points and watchful, which is plus one retaliation attack. This unit gains faithful, five status resistance, and inflicts condemned with their attacks. And Shadow gains Soul Drain, reducing unit morale and applying Soul Bound. Deal plus 30% damage against units with low or lower morale. I really like order aspect. That seems pretty powerful. We reduce the unit upkeep, which will stack up pretty quickly with more signature skills like this. But more importantly, we gain 5 status resistance and we inflict Condemned with every attack, which is minus 3 status resistance for every target. This is really powerful. Out of all these, I actually like Order Aspect the most right now. Obviously, Materium here is good too. But I really like Order right here. That's really strong. So let's get order aspect. Nerve dragons. Hey, they're not even out yet. Please don't. Oh yeah, and uh, one skill point. I guess we can pick up the breath now. Or the roar. So friendly units in two hex radius. Gain strengthened and hastened. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And it only takes one point to use this. This is really nice, because it only takes one action point to use this, so we can move and still use it. As opposed to needing all three points, where you cannot move at all, if you want to use it. So we'll grab that, that's good. Ancient Governor 2, oh wow. Yeah, there's more than one level to Ancient Governor, wow. Okay. Man, so that would be plus 35 fortification health. Holy shit. Okay, I have a feeling taking cities with a dragon lurer governor is going to take a while. No, this is on hard. Not that it makes any difference for these abilities. Anyway, let's grab Exhilarating Roar. There you go, we're leveling up quite nicely. And then we can try to clear the ruins. Just kill some stuff, kind of, on the way. Yeah, kill more stuff. That's fine. Uh, really? I mean, again, I don't want to lose stuff if I don't have to, so... <laughs> let's just do it manually. Use more dragon stuff. I might want to heal him at some point. Okay, so the buff has two tile radius. We just need all of our units within two tiles. Which shouldn't be too hard. Within two tiles of the dragon, that is. Here you go. That's our death star stack. 
uncertain and hasten for everyone. Yep. Looks good. He's at about half health. What are these again? Oh yeah, more flow serpents, because why not? Why did it have to be flow serpents again? Well, alright. It do be like that sometimes. Converted, very nice. That should help finish it faster. Just a little bit faster. No need to move everything, to be honest. Let's actually heal the dragon a little bit. I don't want him to lose his actual health. Oh, yep. Well, he attacked me, so... <laughs> Man, I kind of hate these things, not gonna lie. I actually kind of hate these things. They are really, really annoying. They are so friggin' annoying. And now he's invulnerable again because of our retaliation. This has to be the most annoying tier 2 unit in the entire game. Like, straight up. This is an enthralling stream. <laughs> yeah, I see what you did there. I definitely see what you did there. Alright. We can also start a city somewhere in this vicinity. Alright, another hatchling. Let's grab another scout really quick. Once I get the money, I suppose. Oh no, I'm poor! Where's all the gold we hoarded? That's our second hero. Right, so this guy uh, will be a battle mage because of Sundering Caster. That just makes the most sense. There you go. We did get the Bone Wyvern mount. Let's give that to him. Yep. So just clear this really quick before we move on. You accept the request? Sure, I accept the request. Over here, apparently. Good to know. <laughs> uh, well, alright. At least it's not the Flow Serpents this time. So, this is fine. One tier 3 on it. Not that big of a deal. Okay. He's not close enough for conversion, that's fine. Oh yeah, let's buff everyone really quick. It doesn't have to be literally everyone, this is good enough. There you go. Hey, that's rude. Alright, let's try to convert. What's our chance to convert? 44%. Eh, nah. Just go for 60. There it is. Nice. Right, I don't necessarily want to charge with this tier 1 warrior. That's not the best idea. Let's heal our dragon real quick. And we can just charge with the dragon. There. Okay, good damage. One more. I mean, that's not a lot, but it's fine. Alright. And this fella. Back up a little. He's standing on top of some crap. But it's only a tier 1 unit, not exactly a big deal. You're not going anywhere, sorry. Just back up with these wounded dudes. Oh, 
Well, that's it. Man, these dragons do a lot of damage. Especially this early on. They really do. Magic Missile Wand. Alright. More gold for us. I could give it to my hero, but he doesn't really need it right now. Let's keep the gold. Let's keep the gold. We are currently making 27 gold per turn from the Dragon Horde. On turn 12. I would say that's pretty good. Alright, we want a city up here and we want to clear the haunted graveyard. I think the ruins can wait a bit. We also want to do this quest, obviously. So let's set up for that. And then we could maybe heal for one single turn at least. That wouldn't hurt, certainly. I'm going to need some money. Let's save for one turn. Pretty rough terrain on this map. A lot of wastelands, basically. Which are not super useful for cities. But it is what it is. What does this stack actually have? A hero? Okay, not much, to be honest. But I kind of want to heal at least for one turn here. Okay, let's do this. We can heal for one turn at least and then attack them. That actually seems reasonable. Rapid evolution! There we go. Resurgence for every unit that can evolve and plus 20% experience. So let me check that new tier 3 tome real quick. Obviously we can't pick it yet, but I want to see exactly what it has. If I can find it. It's in there somewhere. Might be faster to find it in the encyclopedia. Tom of Dragons. Okay. Special province improvement, plus 10 knowledge, plus 5 draft per adjacent farm. Unlocks production of various wyvern units. Okay, alignment influences which wyverns can be drafted. Interesting, interesting. I want to see exactly which units those are. Firebomb. Target sustains damage. Adjacent units are dealt 50% of the damage. Also burning and bleeding, so 20 damage total. Six tile range. It's an expert battle magic skill. Okay, so basically an extra AoE in battle magic. That's not a bad thing. Okay, flamer focus. Grants enchanted units a firebomb. So again, that's the same thing we were just looking at a moment ago. So it affects all battle mage units. Purifying Flame, which is an AoE heal. Oh, that's a really nice one. Wow. Friendly units in a one hex radius heal for 25 and have all of their negative status effects removed. That's insane. That's insanely good. That's actually insanely good. Anything that removes negative status effects can be really, really strong. Something that can heal you while also removing negative status effects from multiple units is insane. This is really strong. Draconian Transformation. Major Nace Transformation. So, Major Transformation at Tier 3. Turn target race into Draconians, which grants them Dragon Unit type. So, they will get Draconic Rage, which gives you plus 30% damage when you're at 60% or less health. Natural regeneration. So heals 10% of its maximum hit points as temporary hit points at the end of its turn in combat. Though not more than the unit started combat with. 
heals 10 normal hit points at the start of your turn. Oh, wow. Okay, this is insanely strong. This one is actually nuts. This one is actually straight up nuts. Especially if you have an army of higher tier units with a lot of HP. You heal 10% of your maximum hit points at the end of every single combat round. And you can have units with like 200 health, definitely 150. So you can easily heal for 10, 20 hit points automatically every single turn. Not only that, you heal extra 10 normal hit points every single turn on the world map. This is huge, especially when you are inside hostile territory. But really anywhere outside of your home territory. And you get this at tier 3. Yeah, this is insanely good. Dragon attack. Unis defending the city take 26 fire damage. Unis defending the city have a base 90% chance of becoming burning. Okay. Fires are randomly added. And the young dragon. Grants access to young fire dragons and the young frost dragons, which are fire a uh, fighter units that grow into adult dragons. Okay, evil alignment or lower unlocks young obsidian dragons. And uh, good alignment or higher unlocks young golden dragons. So they evolve into a tier 5 dragon. Purifying breath. Okay, so this is the dragon that's unlocked with good alignment. This unlocks young golden dragons, and then they can evolve into a tier 5 golden dragon, right here. And the tier 5 golden dragon has purifying breath, enemy units sustain damage, 20 spirit, friendly units heal 20 temporary hit points, friendly units have their negative status effects removed, and Demolisher. That's insane. Man, that's kind of nuts. And again, this is a tier 3 tome. Remember though, you have to evolve a unit first to get that. So first... Hold on. Yeah, first you have to recruit a young golden dragon. This one will not have the breath. He will have a Malice Strike, Tail Swipe, and the usual Draconic Rage and also Intimidating Aura. Then you have to evolve him at Champion, but it doesn't take that long to get the Champion. And then you will get a Tier 5 Golden Dragon. And this one, again, will have this Purifying Bread. This is insanely good. So this does damage to the enemies, this heals friendly units, and it removes negative status effects. And the negative status effects include things like Stun, yeah, this is just insanely good. Okay, let's check the other types. So, Obsidian Dragons. What do they get? Okay, Lightning Breath. Damages fortified obstacles, inflicts electrified... Okay, this is just the worst version of that. We do have Lightning Aura. Okay, Lightning Aura is good. It's only 30% chance, but it's a passive chance for any adjacent enemy unit to become stunned. Still, I think I kind of liked the Order one more. The Order one was definitely stronger. It was more universal. Uh, right here, Golden Dragon. It was more universal. Like this breath attack. Two turn cooldown, but this is a very strong attack. A lot of the time, the problem with cone attacks is that they can do friendly fire damage. So there are a bunch of cone shape attacks in the game, but again, this is the cone that extends from your melee range. And a lot of them hit both the enemies and your own units. So the problem with them is that it's tricky to avoid friendly fire. With this, not only you don't have to worry about friendly fire, you can literally use this to heal your own units and remove their negative status effects. This is really good. Of course, it's worse is the Shadow Dragon. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm starting to feel bad for Shadow. Because this is clearly much stronger. 
this is clearly much stronger. Is this gonna be a meme that they hate Shadow? I guess it already kind of is. Let's check the neutral versions real quick. So fire and frost. So probably just a fire breath and frost breath, I take it. Here's the fire breath. Right, so inflict burning, fire damage and fire aura. So 60% chance of inflicting burning on adjacent units. And let's check frost dragon real quick. There it is, so frost aura. 30% chance of becoming frozen, okay. I mean, that's not bad. And the frost breath. Okay, yeah, so the frost dragon is just better than the fire dragon, in my opinion. 60% chance of inflicting frozen with the breath. And also 30% chance of inflicting frozen to any other chance of unit. That's just straight up better than inflicting burning. That's definitely just better. Man, this Tommy is actually insane. This is crazy good. This is an S tier tome. No, this is like an S plus tier. S plus plus. You have S tier tomes, and then you have Tomb of the Dragons that's above that. If this was a tier 4, nobody would bat an eye. Like, if I told you this is actually tier 4, you would probably believe me. I would believe it. If somebody told me right now that this is like a visual bug and that this is actually tier 4, I would believe it. This could easily be tier 4. Like, this would be stronger than some of the tier 4 tomes, damn it. It would literally be stronger than some of the tier 4 tomes. It's just insanely good. Wait, it, it was it like neutral? Yeah, it, it was neutral, right. Was it? Well, it's uh, nature and chaos. But it doesn't require you to have anything. Because it's not tier 4. If it was tier 4, it would have some requirements, but it's tier 3. Yeah, this is just insanely good. Anyway, for our second tier 1 tome... I mean, I could take Tome of the Horde or something, if I really want to. I think I'll just grab Tome of Roots. Because, you know, Vine Prison. We don't need healing roots as much, because we don't have a healing spell. But you can't go wrong with Vine Prison. And Herbalist is kind of nice. Although we might not have the terrain to really take advantage of this. We probably don't have the terrain for this. Yeah, okay, true. We might not have the terrain for that. So... Hmm... There are some potential synergies with Tom of Zeal. With that said, I could pick up Tom of Rhodes anyway, if only because I can get Poison Blades and Poison Arrows pretty quickly. So that would kind of make sense too. Potentially. Army Heal. The yeah, Army Heal is nice to have, definitely. Uh, the Chaplain is a nice unit, for sure. What's the Abbey again? The plus three knowledge per adjacent farm counts as a research post. Right. I don't think there are any obvious changes in any of these, as far as I can tell. But I can't say I remember every single little detail. I certainly do not. I mean, obviously, we could just grab Tom of the Horde. But I don't have a lot of forests. There are barely any around here, to be honest. Yeah, I'm actually kind of leaning towards Tom of Zeal. I'm actually leaning towards Tom of Zeal, yeah.
Alright, why the heck not? We can get Tom of Zeal. Let's go. I need to want her to have uh, some more order affinity. There's some good stuff in the order tree. Alright. Well, we could grab Legion of Zeal right away, which kind of makes sense. Shielded by the holy Okay, that makes sense. Let's grab that. I mean, we are runesmiths after all. So obviously we want to get enchantments. Oh yeah, and we want a rapid evolution. A sub, obviously. That's a really good one. And it will allow our units to evolve faster. That's what we wanted to do. Alright, 155 gold right now. So my neighbor does have distant claim over here. And I don't want to piss them off just yet. Yeah, and they still have distant claim here. Unclaimed. Okay, we can start an outpost right here. That would be alright. I'll just pay 100 with the scout, because my heroes are nowhere close to this area. And I want to start claiming this before other people do. There. Okay, that works. That's 100. Let's do the quest really quick. No losses, please. Oh, yeah, really? Okay, fine. Fine, we'll do it manually. I have to do everything myself, apparently. Yeah, man, so far I'm liking this. But that Tomb of the Dragons looked a little bit overpowered. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It looked a little bit overpowered. Almost to the point where if you're not picking up Tomb of the Dragons, you're just doing it wrong, you know? That's kind of what it looked like to me. <laughs> if you don't pick it up, you're just doing it wrong, objectively. You're just doing it wrong. But hey, we'll see. Still, it did seem pretty overpowered to me. I don't have to use it to see that, obviously. Alright, buff up. Yeah, just a bit. Just a tiny little bit. Uh, okay, right, they have a hero over here. I mean... Right, let's not throw units away if we don't have to, my bad. We should actually summon the spider right away. <laughs> what did that guy do? Yeah, we should summon the spider right away. There. Okay. That's fine. And get a good conversion. Uh, hopefully. Well, any conversion will do. This is fine. Let them come. Yeah, the hero is pretty fast because he's mounted. Let's see what we can convert. 60%. Nice. Okay, very nice. Indeed. Just let them kill it. I probably should have used lightning first, but it's fine. Venomous spit. Four tile range, right? It does the entwined for all. Let's heal up the dragon and just move in with the dragon. All right. So that's 17 damage. Yeah, because we can inflict Condemned pretty easily. We'll have some pretty good synergies with Tom of Zeal. That was definitely a good idea. Okay, poisoned. Uh, let's just keep this guy in the back. No need to throw units away if I don't have to. That would be silly. 
here. Have another spade. And another one. Web. No, I don't want to hit my own dots, but, I mean, this is just a mind control unit, so it doesn't exactly matter if I hit it or not. It's not like I care about it surviving. We do have a dod flanking us here, the night guard. And keep an eye on him. Just go into defense mode. This looks reasonable. Need to kill that hero. He can do quite a bit of damage. These are scouts, so not a big deal. Okay, well, now they're dead. You there. Alright, we're fine. Speed some more. He dead. Now the other guy. 30%? Yeah, he's standing on top of some foliage, which is slightly annoying. But yeah. Okay, Sunder defense once. I'll take it. I don't want to move out of the way here. Move in with the spider. This is a summoned spider. Not mine. 5%! Okay, okay. I wasn't exactly counting on that hitting. What else do you have in here? Roar. Right, the Dragon Breath. I haven't really used it much yet. Tail Swipe. 49 damage with the Tail Swipe. That's kind of nuts. 49 friggin' damage with Tail Swipe. Like, that sounds totally balanced. In a non-balanced kind of way. And we are right at the start of the game still. Like, this is still very early. And we can do basically 50 damage with an AoE, like cone attack. It's melee range only, but man, that's really strong. That's crazy strong. Alright, let's kill him here. I can actually use it on him right here. This is 44. Yeah, this is technically a bit more damage with tail swipe. There you go. He's kind of dead. Yep, you're going down, buddy. That leaves us with the scout. I get the feeling of slight power creep from the dragons. Yeah, yeah, me too. That is definitely a potential concern. Power creep from future DLCs. Because that's some pretty crazy power creep from the dragons, I feel. Marbzilla the Hoarder receives 84 Imperium. Yep. Yes, please. We'll spend that for a city. We got the market. Right, so next stop. How's our mana? It's fine right now, but it won't be fine forever. So let's get a little bit of mana, and we leveled up. And that's the other hero. So let's continue with the battle magic here. Plus one range. Yeah, let's get plus one range first. There you go. Oh yeah, this guy had the green lance. He had the mount. How much gold are we getting now from Dragon Horde? Yeah, we are getting 30 gold per turn from the Dragon Horde right now. On turn 14. Not bad, and this will scale really quickly once you start getting a lot more items. And yes, I can see that outpost. Can't say I'm super happy about it. I haven't even met that person yet. But she's already forward settling me. Sounds legit. Sounds legit. Okay, I kind of really want to heal for at least one turn here. So let's do that really quick. And then we'll go. 
Okay, Legion of Zeal, nice. We will cast that right away. Uh, Draconic Vitality. Fanatical Workforce would be good to speed things up. So let's get that real quick. Plus five food from farms. We don't want the road building. Okay, let's get the road building real quick. We want to have that ace up. And we'll just build the road in this general direction. There's our enchantment. So this is plus 20% experience and the resurgence to all tier 1 and tier 2 units that can evolve. This will help us keep them alive and evolve them faster. That's actually kind of big. Because one of the problems with low tier units that can evolve is actually keeping them alive until they do. With the resurgence, that makes it much easier to keep them alive. Like, way, way easier. Now, this is only a bronze wonder. I can probably clear it. I'm not at full health or anywhere close, but I can probably clear it. We can just use both heroes. Something like this. It would be nice to clear it. But all my remaining units are tier 1, which, you know, is not very impressive. Okay, let's see how this will go. I'm already here, so I kind of want to clear this. Yeah, they have a distant claim on a wonder that's basically right next to me. I don't give a shit. Uh, okay, well, we might or might not be able to do it. A swamp troll. Okay, we can block our growth for five turns and clear it without a fight. I think that's worth it. I normally wouldn't. But okay. Yeah, minus 345 relations. We probably want to be friendly with this person. I might even send a threatening welcome, to be honest. Military ranking, 9 out of 9. Well then. Wand of Blizzards. Okay. Add it to the horde. Receive 300 production in Halheim. Gold. Well, we are about to spend a fair bit of gold. Production is no good if I don't have the money to start new buildings. So, okay. Now we're going northwest. We'll start a city over there. I will probably just go to war with this person. This is just a normal AI. It's not a dragon or anything like that. This is not part of the Ashen War. It's just a normal opponent. So I think we'll just go to war with them. Okay, so 469 gold. Right, plus 7 food production and plus 7 draft per adjacent forest. That won't really do me that much good right now. No, it won't. It won't. How's our morale? Minus 5 city stability, neutral at the moment, so it's fine. Okay, let's just get more production in here. And more units. Yeah, we should spam some Furies. Obviously. It is 100 per. And that's what we want. What's up with you? Thief. You gain the hero item. Barbed shield. A tier 2? Okay, so that's effectively plus 3 gold per turn. We can receive 208, or we can get some Imperium. Okay, in this case, I'll actually take some Imperium. We'll start a Fury here. Alright, let's see where exactly we want that city. Probably, like, over here-ish. I don't want it to be too far away from my capital. I want this mana node to be in range. We could also have it, like, here. To have all this stuff to the south in range. That kind of makes sense. Even, like, right here. That will be, what, five 
regions away from the capital? I think that's reasonable. I probably should have done that much earlier. Okay, I think this is actually kind of reasonable. Yeah, this person won't like me anyway, so I don't give a shit about their relations at this point. They already hate me, alright? Now I seriously need to heal up soon. But let's clear this. Okay, no losses, that's good. And even more items! Tier 2. How much are we making now from the Dragon Horde? Yeah, quite a lot. Quite a lot. Hey, I can't be bothered to add all of that. This is over 40 gold per turn right now. From the Dragon Horde. I'm a big fan of dragons. I can tell you as much. Cast a Legion of Zeal. There's our outpost, so I could turn this into a city right away. Which I probably should. We want to grab more land here. Roaring Furnace. Okay. Fire Giant unit. Yeah, that's a tier 4 unit. That's pretty nice. Okay, let's convert this into a city. That's fine. We want to start claiming more territory around here. Before a neighbor does. Okay, we want uh, two more unlocks here in the Dragon Lord, then we can get a nature aura. Let's see. So nature aura will give every adjacent unit regeneration, which can stack up to five. So this could be plus 30 hit points per turn. Oh yeah, tail attack does get better. Oh wow. The Tail Swine ability now displaces units up to 2 hexes and has a base 60% of stunning units hit. Holy crap! Bro. Bro, okay, I'm feeling... Uh, the power creep right now. I'm really feeling the power creep right now. <laughs> Holy fuck, yeah, that sounds about right. I think you basically summed it up right there. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Holy fuck indeed. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, this is kind of nuts. This is just going to be your ruler. You can't get another one of these units, but that's still kind of nuts. At least I assume you can't get them as normal heroes. Okay, I assume you will not be able to get the Dragon Lords as normal heroes. Because if you can... Yeah. Okay, obviously I'm taking Tailbash. I assume you can't get them as normal heroes. But even like one unit per game, that's extremely strong. That's insanely strong. Yeah, it's pretty early for something that powerful. Can you apply Primal Strike with the tail attack? I think you can. Uh, I would have to double check in combat. We can try. Where was it? Where was Primal Strike? What the heck? Where the heck was it? Oh, under warfare. Oh, right, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can try. It would delay nature aura if I pick it up next. But yeah, that would be pretty interesting if you could. Man, that would be totally balanced if you could. We can make a save after next level up and test. For science. I might just do that. 
I might actually just do that. Okay, fanatical workforce. Uh, let's grab the Zealot. We definitely want these guys. They will have nice synergy. And it's a nice chip unit we can spam a bit. And this is good too, though. Okay, no, Zealot. A Lizardman Zealot. Alright, I guess that works. Uh, we want to cast... Okay, finish casting Legion of Zeal first. Obviously. Uh, Sculpit. Alright, that's our new city to the north. I'll probably want that mana node. Are these claimed? Yeah. What's not claimed? This is not claimed. Okay, I just want to grab territory that's not claimed uh, by, like, the dragon person over here. I don't want to piss them off too much. On guard the wisecracker. Okay. Okay, get some mana. Clear this. I really need to heal. Be gone. Okay, sure, be gone. Yeah, but they converted the outpost into a city, which was to be expected, I guess. Not exactly a surprise. I'll probably just go to war with them and take it. But we want to heal up first, before we do that. Okay, so... There are more infestations we'll be destroying, but we haven't met any free cities yet. I don't need plus one city cap just yet. I don't really need seafaring. I don't need excavation yet. We can save on some tier one unit upkeep soon. Oh yeah, and we can pick up master masons soon. That's definitely a good one to get early on. And we can get that in three turns. Yeah, so this is a very balanced DLC. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This map will not have a lot of free cities. And it will have this crap going on. Yep. Well, we'll be going to war with this person one way or the other. I'll probably raise this city or something. Well, I don't know yet. We'll see when we get there. I could also just capture it. I could keep this as an outpost and just capture Silver Bridge. Or I could raise the outpost later. The only problem is that Silver Bridge is quite far away from these resources down here, haste berries. It's like one, two, three, four, five provinces away from that, but that's too far away. But I don't know if I want two cities so close to each other. Uh, we'll see. We can always vassalize it. Okay, let's stay here for a turn or two. Heal up. And I think we'll just declare war on them. That's what I'm leaning towards. We're about to get a fury on a spider mount. Take a look around. I could grab palisade walls really quick. Okay, let's do that real quick. There's a Legion of Zeal. That will be helpful. Now, we can cast Fanatical Workforce. Wizard Bond. Yeah, I will accept that one. Do they have any items I can buy? Nope. I guess not. We can get Declaration of Friendship here. It's not cheap. But okay, 100 is acceptable. It just get expensive for further declarations. Okay, they already claimed quite a bit of land here. Research post. It should be justified. Uh, yeah, we have minor justification, so it will be justified. I mean, they are claiming my provinces, so... There's the Summon Zealot. Okay, Draconic Vitality. We do want to grab that sooner or later. Probably sooner rather than later. So let's do that. 
there's fanatical workforce. Let's use it on our new city up here to make it grow a little bit faster. We want to expand this city as much as possible. Get some units for defense in case I'll need it. Explore the general area around it. How much are you guys healing per turn? Plus 25. This doesn't feel like it was plus 25, but okay. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Fine. There's the fury. Let's grab at least one ward shaman. Morale is neutral. No need for a tavern just yet. If I'm going to attack the AI, I should probably grab wizard crypts and prison cells. Okay, let's get prison cells real quick. Yep, she declared rivalry. I mean, that's not exactly surprising, is it? Not really, it's not. We may not be so different after all, Marbzilla. <laughs> I mean, we look pretty similar. As far as I can tell. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about all of this stuff being so strong. On one hand, I kind of like it, but on the other hand, there's definitely some major power creep here. There's some major power creep. Okay, are these guys actually not healing? They did not heal. What's going on with that? Oh, is it because of this shit? Yeah, it's because of volcanic heat. My bad. I need to move off that crap. Yep, yep, there you go. Well, that explains a lot. Obviously, and now this is not my territory. Until I grab it. Yep. <sighs> well, that's a bit awkward, but alright. Alright, alright. I mean, I'm not in a huge rush to go to war. But we could definitely take Silver Bridge. That shouldn't be very hard. How's growth? Four turns. Oh yeah, we can now pick up Master Masons, so let's do that. Your units regenerate additional 15 points per turn in friendly domain. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna grab that. It just needs to be not on uh, volcanic terrain. Obviously. Okay, workshop. I'll just have to go where the farm is, which is slightly unfortunate, but all right. There's the palisade. New quest? Oh, yep, over here. Well then, <laughs> let me heal first. I'm one tile off. I'm actually one tile off from going into my territory on non-volcanic terrain. Well, that's slightly disappointing. All right, the workshop. How much gold are we making now? Yeah, quite a bit. From the Dragon Horde. Yeah, so this could be a city. I can always just release it as a vassal later if I want to. We are not going to war just yet, so this can be a city. If needed, I can always just release it as a vassal in the future. Now we will heal much more. Now we will heal for 40. So they should go back mostly to full health after one single turn of regeneration, which is nice. Yeah, the Dragon Lords are going to be huge for early game momentum. And early game momentum is just so important in a game like this. It's huge. So, in my future games, I will probably be tempted to just pick a Dragon Lord every single time, to be honest. 
I don't really see too many good reasons to not pick a Dragon Lord. Like, that's just it. It just feels like it's too good to pass up on, you know? It really does. Okay, so obviously we should grab the ruins because we conquered that. We'll get plus 20 knowledge, plus 5 Imperium, and it will add Butcher Ogre and Brewer Ogre. The Brewer Ogre is nice for the freeze. There you go, very nice. And oh yeah, we can hire another hero. We need an Archer hero, because we have that bow. I can always just respec someone. What's this? This unit deals plus 20% damage against tier 1 units. Not the best trait I've ever seen in my life, but I guess it's fine. It's something that will work in combat. Fortified will do nothing for normal combat. It's just more fortification. So this is fine. We can just grab this one and respec. That's totally acceptable. Respec it is then. There. Unequip. And grab the true shot. Tier 4 bow, very nice. Okay. Uh, keep it a spider mount, that's fine. Now, if I equip any of these wands, I'll be making less gold. So I will only be equipping items that are worth equipping. Okay, and we'll work on warfare probably. Or I could work on support. Let's just go into Warfare, though. Bloodlust, that's good. A sprint. Archery. Alright. Carry on. Go get some experience. So now you want a city somewhere over here to the north. Let's go. At least that's the plan. And maybe then we'll go to war. And that might not be on this stream, though. Okay, another dragon. Alright. Well, he doesn't hate me, so that's good. Can't afford a declaration of friendship just yet. And yet another one. Yep, that's good. These are the ones we want to stay friendly with. So, right, let's see. Underground passage. We want some food for this one, for obvious reasons. To make it grow. Okay, just chill. There's the other city. Add a governor. There you go. Uh, I'll have to wait with buildings. Oh no, we're poor! Where's our gold hoard? I want my gold hoard. It's gone. Somebody stole our gold. Clearly. Clearly. So we had another infestation over here, but it looks like the AI destroyed it. Any more wonders? Other than uh, this furnace to the east. There was an infestation underground, I think. Yeah, this is clearly an infestation. So I could go and get rid of that. How far away is that? Where's the passage? Yeah, right here. We should probably go and get rid of that. Let's send one hero to establish an outpost and go get rid of that infestation underground. That's the war shaman because we get extra bonuses for destroying infestations. Extra hero items. And then we can either use them or get gold for them. I do kind of miss prospecting. Dragon Lords, you know... Dragon Lords will have some insane momentum with Materium and uh, Industrials culture. But I don't want to play Industrials every single time. Still, Industrials is just so freaking good with prospecting. It's just so good. But I don't want to use it every single time I play. 
<laughs> Even though I'm tempted to, I am really tempted to. But I don't want to use it literally every single time I ever play. Okay, it's second Forester. Not quite needed right now, but it makes sense. How's our Ford? 78. Okay, second Forester. So, plus 7 draft per adjacent Forester. That would be good right here. I mean, not literally right now, but in the future we'll have three adjacent Foresters, potentially. Here, here, and here. So, in the future, that will be plus 21 draft from one Forest of Stakes. At least that's the plan. You know what this game needs? It needs pins, like in Civilization 6, so that you can plan exactly what you want to have and where in the future. I would really like to see something like that. I really, really need pins. And I need map search. So, pins and map search. I couldn't hear you over the sound of nature affinity getting free animal armies constantly. Yeah, I mean, wild growth is good, or wild expansion rather. However, you can get some really expensive units in terms of mana upkeep that aren't as useful. It's good, but it's a little bit RNG. It's a little bit RNG. And hey, you can still have nature while having industrious culture, you know? These things are not mutually exclusive. You can play industrious culture with nature affinity. Like, I literally did that before. And prospecting is just so good for early momentum. It's insanely good. And combined with the Dragon Lords? Yeah, that's going to be nuts for early game. Okay, Draconic Vitality Transformation. Now we can pick a tier 2 tome. I'm always tempted to grab the Glade Runner because of aspect of the... Uh, I mean, Tome of Glades for the Glade Runner and aspect of the road. That's one of my favorites. That's definitely one of my favorites. One of I haven't played with much is actually Order. Yes, I played Order a little bit, but really not much. So outside of Shadow, Order is actually my least played affinity as of right now. Well, I mean, you can't go wrong with plus 30% critical hit. And I actually quite like the Golem Mine. The Golem Mine saved my ass a few times. It certainly did. Alright, well, let's get Tom of Glades. Okay, Tom of Glaze it is then. Yeah, Heroes of Might and Magic, Skeleton Army flashback. Yeah, definitely. Alright, the Glade Runner. I love that unit for the debuff. It's so friggin' good. My favorite ranged unit in the game, the Glade Runner. Because of the debuff, it cannot be resisted. It always lands. It's just so good. Alright, keep exploring. Oh yeah, this is the hero. Uh, he was supposed to start an outpost somewhere. Probably like here-ish. I don't want it to be super close to pink. And I want it to have some good territory we can use. Okay, let's go underground here. Yep, that's an infestation, alright. We want to get rid of that. This is probably a bit of an overkill going with everyone, but hey. I like overkill. Still inactive, but probably not for long. Actually kind of active now. Not for long. Mm, this is not a bad spot. Or here. Oh, yeah, but they attacked us. That's fine. Are we close to evolving anything yet? 
Uh, probably not. Where are the units that evolve? Yeah, these guys. Yeah, not really. About one third for veteran. So not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. Alright, what will we get? Cosmic Orb, Anathema. So that's a tier 4 a charge sword. To Hunter, I mean. It is a pretty good one. I mean, it's kind of situational. It's best if you are fighting some magic origin uh, creatures. But it's definitely a good one. I can't really use it on anyone I got right now, but we can use it on future heroes. And hey, it's a tier 4, damn it. It can just sit in our inventory for now, and we'll get... How much was it again? Was it 9? Yeah, it was 9 gold per turn, just for having it sit in our inventory. We also got a tier 3 Cosmic Orb, and the Dread Spider Hatchling, and Wand of Inversion. So Wand of Inversion is quite literally my favorite miscellaneous item in the game. Definitely the f my favorite tier 2 item in the game. Because it's just so good if you use it at the right moment. It's massive if you use it at the right moment. I just love having it. So we'll give it to our main guy, I think. Instead of this taunt. Oh yeah, keep the spider leg, keep the locket of channeling, and the wand of inversion. There you go, nice. Now let's get the heck out of here. I mean, I could start an outpost here to get the mana, which is not a terrible idea. It's cheap. Yeah, it's worth it for the mana. We'll need the mana for all the enchants we'll be having. Okay, and this dude... Uh, I'll need to wait one turn to get the money. We got a wonder over here, Bandit's Way, so I want that to be no more than three territories away. This spot looks reasonable. So the Silver Tongue Fraud would be in range of potentially two cities. It's currently four provinces away from this one, right? Or three? Yeah, four. This will be only two away. Okay, so right here. I just need to wait to get the money. Underground passage, let's take a peek. Some unfriendly stuff over there. Oh no, where's my money? Give me the gold. Uh, what we need is right here, right of wealth. <laughs> 2000 gold instantly. You can't go wrong with 2,000 gold instantly. They want to discuss. Alright, well, let's discuss then. Defensive Pact. They want 320 gold for a Defensive Pact. Well, I don't have that. They have some items I could buy if I had the gold. No grievances to settle. All right. How much does pink hate us? Yes. Okay, minus 590, suspicious. Still just minor war justification. I mean, it's still good enough, to be honest, for when we want to go to war. Arcane applications. Oh no, this stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't like these. Oh, I really don't like that one. I really don't like that one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's freezing. Come on. Oh, don't crash on me. Oh no. I'm getting the Windows cursor. That's a bad sign. Okay, no, it's fine. I thought it's going to crash for a second. Yeah, I don't want this crap. I'm just gonna pay some mana. That's acceptable. I can live with that. 
We need more enchants. We definitely need more enchants. Oh yeah, we need to cast Draconic Vitality, obviously. But yeah, I think we've seen uh, most of the things that we were able to see early on. And I'm definitely feeling the power creep, like a few people said already. So on one hand, I like it. But on the other hand, this is a lot of power creep. Claimed already. Wait, by who? Hmm. Yeah, we want to stay friendly with these. That's slightly annoying. Right here. This one would be fine. Yeah, okay, this one's fine. We already plan going to war with pink, so this one doesn't matter. It's just the green one I don't want to piss off because we're currently friendly with them. Okay, time to get the heck out of here. Go somewhere more useful. Our outpost is starting. That will be a city. So how much of the map have we explored so far? Uh, yeah, well, fair bit, not that much. Oh no, I need more money. I'm actually seriously missing prospecting right now. Have I mentioned how good prospecting is? Yeah, actually, we should not be doing this. Yeah, have I mentioned how good prospecting is? It's good. Okay, conduit. You guys are building a storehouse, that's fine. Uh, our capital will have to wait one turn. Annex more stuff. Yeah, let's grab the mana here, obviously. Research post. Yeah, we don't care about Pink's opinion. They will hate us anyway. Yeah, I don't plan starting a city underground. I'm just getting an outpost to get the mana. I can always raise it later, but it's cheap. And we can afford it. And we'll be having a lot of enchants in the future, so... Building up some mana makes sense. Is it still minor? Oh, very unjust now, really? Uh, Alright, it was like minor justification not long ago. Now it will be very unjust. Alright, I mean... Sure. We should probably just fabricate a grievance or denounce them. I have the mana. One hundred fifty gold. I don't have grievances. Not that I'm in a huge rush to go to war with them, mind you. I'm not. Oh, a trade proposal. Contact information. They will give us contact information in exchange for 32 gold. Doesn't seem like it's worth it, but okay, fine. I guess I'll pay you 32 gold. What up? Here, let's stay friendly. Basically, there are two factions of these dragons, and I'm staying friendly with one of them. There. Okay. Oh no, you have been denounced. Yeah, ask me if I care. Right, that's our outpost, obviously. No need to do anything with it. Just let it exist and give us mana.
Yeah, I don't want them to like me. <laughs> I mean... Our relations are at minus 800. So I don't want them to like me. She likes empires that don't break treaties. Minus 48, all right. I mean, again, like I said, I'm not really in a rush to go to war with them or anything. I just assumed we'll go to war because they forward settled me. I claimed a bunch of land that they had claims on. But that didn't happen. Uh, this is terrible. Shuffle. Okay, better. Aspect of the road. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, Glade Runner. Let's grab at least one here. 140 gold. Not cheap. But alright, I guess now I could grab a gold mine, which kind of makes sense. What can we actually claim here? Yeah, the gold mine on our own deposit makes sense. Let's do that. So, uh, there's at least one wonder I could clear over here, the Roaring Furnace, but that's a silver one. We can probably handle it, though. I wonder how much the rewards will scale, because we get extra hero items for clearing infestations and wonders. So I don't know how much that will scale. We already got tier 4 items for, like, low-level ones. For bronze infestations and or bronze wonders. We already got tier 4 items for that. I don't know if that was luck or just normal. <laughs> For Dragon Lords, but it happened. But yeah, I can almost definitely clear this and then claim it. And it will add a Fire Giant to Rally of the Legions. So hey, I certainly wouldn't mind that. Alright. Oh no, 8 gold. Alright, well, I clearly need more gold. That's a fancy looking dragon. Pink is not actually at war with anyone, is she? Nope. Peace with everyone, but also no alliances and no defensive pacts. Military ranking 5. Economy ranking 6. Alright. So we could go clear this Roaring Furnace and then probably wrap things up. I'm going to need a stronger stack for that, obviously. So it probably makes sense to just use the heroes. Okay, we'll use the heroes. And that's already half of the army. What are the most experienced units? A few elites. Uh, we are about to get the root enchant. So that will work well with shield units. Uh, two turns, and then we'll have to cast it. I mostly have tier 1 units here, but we have a Fury. We will get a Glade Runner in three turns. That might be a bit too long. We have a War Shaman. Okay, move the Fury to the main stack. We can also move the Lightbringer. But he's not nearly as good if Mind Control fails. And, you know, it might fail. It's certainly not guaranteed at 60% base. And we don't know what we'll be fighting exactly. Stuff. Who knows?
Okay, so let's wait for aspect of the road here. We'll cast it and hopefully it will be done quickly. Man, Pink is really building this city up. AI in this game just loves to forward settle you. You guys thought the Ramcam troll face was bad? Yeah, he was actually an apprentice. He was an apprentice of Age of Wonders 4 AIs. That's what he was. <laughs> One gold. Yeah, I should probably build a road here. To go faster to sculpt it. It will cost me some money, but alright. Yeah, more grievances. Okay, let's just get the road here. There you go. Now, I don't really need to bring everything, because we can't fight uh, the Wonder with more than one army anyway. So, you know. Get that War Shaman. Everyone else can actually do the quest. I have 11 turns left to do that. Might as well go and do that then. Uh, Alright, battlefield looting. Yes, we do want that. Plus three gold per unit tier of units killed in combat. Obviously we want that. Mines grant plus ten mana. I only have one mine at the moment. So this spirit wolf with guardian spirit and resurgence is pretty good. Doesn't necessarily synergize very well with my army at the moment. And it's not necessarily worth 175 Imperium, but it's still pretty good nonetheless. I definitely don't need the Whispering Stone when there are barely any free cities around here. Sent it to gold. Alright, let's claim haste berries down here. And some extra knowledge. That's haste berries, right? Yes, it is. So plus 20 draft. This will have to wait. Yeah, new rally has started. I would grab one, but I think I need gold for other things at the moment. I definitely do. Look at all this gold we're getting from Dragon Horde, however. That's what, 51 gold right now from Dragon Horde alone. And it could have been more. It could have easily been way more than this. Growth in Halheim is blocked for four turns. Nature born. All cities gain stability. Uh, Autumn Ferry. Okay. That's not too bad. I wouldn't mind one. Sure. Okay. That's actually kind of nice. That is pretty nice. I'll grab the ferry. And you can join uh, the army here. Yep. Okay. That's good. The ferry will actually join the army. That's a good one. Okay, go clear that quest. 170 gold. Vendor. There's aspect of the root and we'll cast it right away. Two more research cycles. Entwined Protector isn't bad. Certainly isn't bad. This buff is also kind of nice. So let's grab that. Uh, two turns to cast aspect of the root. All right. Mint, we need gold. You know, I have to say, this game has done a pretty good job with uh, resources in general. I mean, gold, mana, and things like that. You can spend them very, very easily. You don't really end up with like thousands and tens of thousands of gold and nothing to do with it. I mean, if you do, you're probably doing it wrong. Even if you go like full gold material, you can easily just utilize that gold. Kind of the same with mana. You can use up your mana very, very easily, very, very quickly. Okay, kill this. Looks like we might not have to. I don't want to block my growth, no. A nature check. 60% success. Okay. 
40% failure. If we fail, we lose one nature affinity for four turns, for six turns. That's not such a big deal, to be honest. I can live with that. Failure, okay, why am I not surprised? Of course it's a failure. Two tier three worms. Okay, we didn't lose anything. Sounds good. More production in Holheim. You gain a fury on it. You gain knowledge. Yeah, let's gain knowledge. There. Tier 3 Tom Wen. Condemnation, Creed Forest. Okay, sure, we can do Condemnation really quick. I want my Tier 3 Dragon Tom, that's what I want. Vassals grant plus 10 gold in tribute. <laughs> what vassals? I don't know what that is. Clearly no vassals to see over here. Not on this map, at least. Certainly not. Right, that's the War Shaman. That's a Glade Runner. Yeah, he'll want to join the main stack. Once we're done with the Roaring Furnace. Would be nice to annex it right away. When is the city going to grow? It just did. Nice. I just need to take it then. Should be fine with this army. That's a pretty good one. I don't think I'll be waiting one extra turn for that Glade Runner though. That's not that big of a deal. Okay, just build a road here, that's fine. Okay, we can attack it on the next turn. Hopefully that won't be a big problem. What else do we have to clear around here? A few units to the north. And let's convert this outpost into a city. That should definitely be a city. How's our gold? 382. Okay, I'm at plus 11 right now. We are paying quite a bit for the unit upkeep, but I do have quite a lot of units at this point. Any interesting heroes? Inspiring defender. Unit enters defense mode and then at the chase and friendly units gain bolstered defense. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Okay, we can grab this hero, that's fine. And probably respect them to use two hundreds. Because I have that tier four two hundred sword. Oh yeah, I also need to equip the cosmic orb. Who's who in here? <laughs> I'm kind of losing track who's who. Oh, this guy should be using a different weapon, right? Oh yeah, this guy should be using the cosmic orb. There you go. Because that's just straight up better. You're the archer. And we'll respect you. To be melee. We also had the Whirlwind Blade. But yeah, this is really nice. It's 30 damage total. And there are a lot of units that are weak to spirit. It's just a very good sword overall. Yeah, so Bloodlust. Fighting one. Keen Edge. That'll do. And he will be the governor. Off you go. Nice. Workshop. Farm. Yeah, this is fine. They won't like me anyway. I don't care. We got Aspect of the Road. Very nice. That's six units total at the moment. That will do. <laughs> I'm actually losing some gold right now. It's okay. Oh no, where's our gold hoard? Clearly, I'm not hoarding enough stuff. That's what the game is actually telling me. Hey bro, you're not hoarding nearly enough. 
What kind of dragon are you? Like, what actual kind of dragon are you? Where is all the gold you're holding? Or you're supposed to be holding? You have brought shame upon the dragon family. Yeah, okay, well, we want to do this anyway. Two arms. Earth Titan. Fire Giant. Iron Golem. Looks like a fun fight. Well, there's a level up. Okay, let's do this one manually. Okay, that reminds me. One other thing I would like to see more of is more, like, battlefield variety overall. Because a lot of the battlefields get really repetitive. Like, you see the same ones over and over. So, in the future, I would definitely like to see more variety in that department. Like, preferably way more variety. Okay, so let's set up uh, maybe over here. Buff up. They do have an Earth Titan, which is a tier 5 mythic unit. And they have a Fire Giant. Alright, yeah, it's a big boy. It's a pretty big boy. Yeah. 90% chance of inflicting immobilized. It's a fairly damage heavy charge. So I probably want to charge it myself before it can charge me. Because, you know, that just makes sense. We can probably use Tail Swipe right away. Okay, I can't actually convert anything right now. Unfortunately, and that's pretty good damage right there. Okay, we can kill this Iron Golem right away. So let's do that. And then we'll charge the Titan with our Dragon. I think that makes the most sense. Are you dead? Please be dead. Okay, so charge over here. Uh, yeah, hold on. I want to be here. Yeah, right here. Then we can use Tail Swipe. Like so. Wait, what? Okay, that was a bit weird, but alright. It's good damage on the Golem. This Earth Titan might be a bit of a problem. 70%. Okay, he's done. Hmm. Well, 100. 30 damage. Obviously, I won't kill the Titan in one turn. And that's just not gonna happen. And let's grab a fortune buff here. Plus 30% crit. That makes sense. Nice, we got a crit. One more with the fury. Okay, Graze. Let's see what he's going to do here. The fire giant is all the way in the back. Okay, he's going left. For the ranged hero. The titan needs to die first. Now we can kill him, I think. Pretty good damage. Get some crates. Yeah, there's a crate. Okay, two crates. 
he's going down. He wasn't as scary as he looked. Bye bye. Yep, that wasn't so scary. Still got the fire giant coming in, but I don't think that's going to be a big problem either. Okay, Sunder defense. So this is potentially blind, but only 60%. It might or might not work. Probably not worth it, just do a regular attack. He shouldn't be able to kill anything on his own in one attack. Okay, this is fine. Yeah, that was actually quite a bit of damage, but we got this. Heal up again. This should be enough range damage to kill him. Yep, okay, easily. Easily. He's already dead, nice. Let's see what we'll get from this. No losses. We got Elite on the Lightbringer now, not bad. And we collected 45 gold. Cosmic Orb. Okay, just Cosmic Orb? That's slightly disappointing, but okay. What are the actual rewards for clearing it? Ring of Protection, plus one resistance, plus one defense. I guess I'll grab that, because I can use it on my actual dragon. Melee attacker sustains some damage. Yeah, I'm going to grab the ring. Slightly disappointing rewards. Actually, slightly disappointing rewards. We literally had better rewards for clearing a Bronze Wonder and a Bronze Infestation earlier. So I'm actually a bit disappointed. Uh, dragon Scales, right. Plus 2 defense, plus 5 blood resistance. Oh yeah, we should grab this terrifying gorging skill, where we can basically eat an enemy unit up to tier 3 and heal ourselves for 30. And if it fails, we do guaranteed 30 damage. So heck yeah, that's pretty nice. And with that said, I think this is going to be a good moment to wrap things up. Uh, we are about two hours in. We are three hours in. <laughs> yeah, I intended for this to be around two hours long. So yeah, I think we've seen, uh, well, almost everything we could see at this point. So conclusions. Yeah, dragons are totally balanced. That's my main conclusion from this. It's going to be fun to play. I can tell you as much. So one thing I can tell you is going to be a lot of fun playing with a dragon lord. It's not necessarily going to be very balanced. And I see some potentially pretty broken combos with some of the other dragon lords. But it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. And you know, sometimes fun is more important than exact balance. Nothing will ever be perfectly balanced, especially in a more complex 4x game. When it comes to balance versus fun, if something is not necessarily balanced but is fun to play, I'm totally okay with this. One of the reasons why I liked Frontier Pass for Civilization 6. Nobody will ever call Frontier Pass balanced, but heck, it was fun to play. Anyway, that's going to be it for this stream. Like I said earlier, I still stream primarily on Twitch and that is not changing. This was more of an exception than a role. I wanted this to be on YouTube faster, so I figured I'll just stream this directly to YouTube today. And that's what I did. Either way, thanks for coming and joining me today, everyone. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. Have a good one. And leave a like. So, bye-bye.